The blue-footed boobies are much more prolific. The nest is little more than a clearing in the sand in which they will lay two or three eggs. Incubation on the ground has its disadvantages. Heat without any protection in the shade is terrible and may be dangerous. But the boobies have learned some tricks to make the stifling heat more bearable. The so-called gula ventilation is one of these tricks. A quick movement of the folds of the skin under their beaks generates a current of air that evaporates humidity and cools them down. Also, the self-sacrificing parents know how to make use of currents of fresh air. When the wind gets up, they position their bodies so that when they fluff out their feathers, the breeze cools their backs. The birth of the chicks occurs in sequence, as does the laying, with a period of three to five days between them. This has a terrible but practical purpose. If there is a good year and there are plenty of fish, the boobies can raise three chicks. But if there is a food shortage, the largest chick will receive all the food and the others will gradually die off according to their size. A dramatic way of ensuring the survival of the greatest possible number of offspring. The boobies also have a dramatic mating display, but that of the Galapagos albatross is even more complex and spectacular. At four or five years of age, the albatrosses return to the island Española to find a mate. These birds can live for 50 years and they mate for life, so the choice of a partner is a crucial time for them. Courting is governed by a very complex ritual that seems to combine dance steps with occasional fencing contests. Not only the young participate in courting, couples that did not manage to raise any young the year before join in this extraordinary dance, and the occasional bachelor bird dares to try to steal another's partner. After finding a mate, the albatrosses return to the same place year after year to reproduce and, as in the case of the boobies, lay their eggs on the ground. Incubation lasts for two months and both adults take turns. In Galapagos, there can be no room for error when caring for an egg. Albatross goes out to fish and leaves her vulnerable eggs for a few minutes. The egg is a source of food and water, and the mockingbirds know it. Once the eggshell is broken, the larva lizards take advantage of the occasion. The 
shell is also an irreplaceable source of calcium for them. However, in spite of the apparent tragedy, everything forms part of an overall balance. The mockingbirds have also hatched and their chick will benefit from the energy-filled albatross egg. In Galapagos, it is easy to see how each animal depends on the species that share its territory. But there is something common to all of these species which goes beyond the frontiers that mark each one of the islands, a life support system shared by all life in Galapagos, the sea. Under the waters that bathe the Galapagos archipelago, there are an infinite number of habitats brimming over with life. Unlike the islands, these are open systems and many species pass from one to the other without encountering any physical obstacles. This natural wealth is due to the particular conditions of the Pacific Ocean in the Galapagos area where the trade winds and the ocean currents combine to create an annual cycle with slight variations. Cold waters arrive in the Peru current from the south, the Cromwell equatorial current from the west, and the Panama current from the north with warmer waters. The first penguins must have arrived by sea from the frozen waters of Argentina and Chile. The Galapagos penguins descended from those penguins of Humboldt and Magellan. This is the only one of the 18 species of penguins that appears north of the equator and nests only in the tropics. of the cold waters of Galapagos was the key to the origin and survival of this penguin. The icy waters from the south provided the microscopic nutrients and the rest of the trophic chain came after them. A chain of life that ends up outside the water.